When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. If I were to ask you to name one naturally occurring acid and base, you might say, well, there's citric acid, which we can find in fruits, especially in citrus fruits, such as oranges, which would be correct. That is a naturally occurring acid. And a naturally occurring base, you might say calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And this is naturally occurring, and we can find that in, for example, marble, which creates, gets created under extremely hot conditions. So these are your naturally occurring, two examples of, one example of naturally occurring acid, an example of natural naturally occurring base. And then the structural form of citric acid is C3H5OCOOH3. I hope that is correct. Um, and then the actual chemical formula for calcium carbonate is CaCO3. And why did I mention all this? Because the actual dot point itself says, identify data, gather and process information from secondary sources to identify examples of naturally occurring acids and bases and their chemical composition. So we're gonna go over a couple of different examples and we'll do exactly what I just mentioned. We'll go over the names of them. So in this case, citric acid, the chemical composition, and I'll quickly mention where you can find them as well. That should be the important points from this dot point. So the chemical composition, what, what molecules are made up, what they're made up of, the actual name of it, and what they can be found as. And there's for the acids, I'll go over the acids first. I'll go over the acids first. And there's a couple of really sort of quite common ones. First one was again mentioned, we mentioned citric acid. And this was this one here, this one. And we said the actual chemical form it was c 3 h 5 O, and then it had a bracket C O O H, and then it had a three. So that means that this here, this part, is the same as these groups here. One, so I had three of these groups, two, three, and it had its carbons here. One, two, three, and. Where can we find citric acid? I said earlier, these are in citrus fruit. In citrus fruit. Next is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a relatively easy one to remember the chemical structure of it. I mean, the actual chemical formula is just HCl. And the structure has a hydrogen and a chlorine attached together. Where can we find it? We can actually find it in our stomach. So it's just our stomach acid. And naturally occurring because we create our own stomach acid. We don't need to have it synthetically made. We don't need to make it man-made. Uh, we don't need to make it in the lab. We can also make it in our, in our body itself. So hydrochloric acid is an example of a naturally occurring acid. Next one is acetic acid. Now the actual chemical formula for acetic acid was up here. Well, this was the actual structure. The chemical formula is C2H3COOH. Again, that COOH, that was this group here. That was your COOH group. Now, what kind of uses does this have? Well, it's actually found in vinegar. So we find it in vinegar. Vinegar itself is acetic acid, which is why it has that sour taste. And one easy way to realize that we actually, these are all different types of, of natural occurring acids, is that they have these carbons in their chain, both for citric acid and for Acetic acid, citric acid and acetic acid are both have these different types of carbons. And carbons is usually an organic. So most things that have carbon in are organic and thereby they're natural. Many cases, not all, but many cases. So we mentioned these are three, we've already mentioned a couple of times. So I mean, these are already straightforward. You should have heard of citric acid, hydrochloric acid, and acetic acid before. But now we've quickly gone over what kind of things they get used in as well. So for example, they can be found in citrus fruit, in our stomach acid, or in vinegar. And ascorbic acid is another one. Now this one might sound a bit unfamiliar, but if I give the actual common name, it might sound a lot more familiar because acetic ascorbic acid is the same thing as vitamin C. And vitamin C itself can be found in all kinds of fruit. 
So it's very common to be found in fruit, therefore why it's naturally occurring. And the actual chemical formula is C6H8O6. So you should, what I would recommend for the acids, I would recommend to remember the names, citric acid, hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, ascorbic acid. Also, remember where they're actually, I mean, I mean, the first three you should be able to remember yourself because you've mentioned them so many times, but remember why we can find them, why they're naturally occurring, where we can find them. So for example, for citric acid in citrus fruit, for hydrochloric acid in stomach acid, for acetic acid in vinegar, and ascorbic acid in fruit itself. So I will remember that as well. And again, remember the chemical formula because it says in the dot point that you need to know the chemical composition as well. And then we've got calcium carbonate. Now calcium carbonate, I said earlier that was marble. And you can find it in marble. So calcium carbonate is the actual name for it. The chemical formula is Ca, which is this one here, and CO3. So CO3, this is carbonate, and this is obviously our calcium, that's why it's called calcium carbonate. And marble is yeah, the common thing we can find. And marble itself is created in really hot environments, such as in your volcanoes or under the actual mantle, or in the mantle itself. And we have ammonia. And again, you should have probably heard of ammonia before as well. Ammonia itself has the chemical formula NH3. And for example, it's, it's found in humans, but more in fish as well, fish. And this is a way that we can remove our toxic waste, so our nitrogenous waste, nitrogenous waste. What nitrogenous means, it means protein. So when we break down our proteins, for us, we produce some ammonia, but for the fish, most of their nitrogen, so most of their proteins get broken down into this ammonia. And then we can find it in our urine. So a lot of the freshwater fish will have ammonia in their urine, and humans will also have a bit of ammonia, but most of it is urea, but a bit of it is ammonia. And ammonia is a strong base. So I'll go over the dot point again, and I'll go over the different things we've just covered. We have covered that we need to know about the different names, where they can be found, so naturally, naturally where they can be found, and their chemical composition. So citric acid can be found in citrus fruit, and its chemical formula is C3H5O, and then it has bracket C, O, O, H, and a 3. And we've covered this one a couple times already. Hydrochloric acid, its chemical formula was HCl, and it can be found in the stomach. Acetic acid, its chemical formula is C2H3COOH, and it can be found in vinegar. Vinegar itself is mostly acetic acid. And then we had ascorbic acid, and the common name for ascorbic acid is vitamin C. And it can be found in fruit, and its chemical formula is c 6 h 8 O six, and then we had these are our these are all our acids. These were our acids, and then we had these were our bases here. We had two bases that we mentioned: calcium carbonate. Its chemical formula is CaCO three, and it can be found in marble. And then we have ammonia. Its chemical formula is NH three, and it is found in. It's the way that we get rid of our nitrogenous waste. So where can it be found? It can be mostly found in urine. That's where we find it, and most in urine of freshwater fish. Some urine, some of urine in other animals, but most in freshwater fish. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.